today I will show you guys how to recover data from this Lexar flash drive that is not being recognized when it's being plugged in. A toddler pushed up against this flash drive when it was uh, plugged into the laptop and uh, as soon as that happened the unit stopped working. So let me briefly show you what this drive had experienced and what we're going to do in order to recover the information from it. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the drive out of this connector, out of this enclosure, sorry. On the inside, we will find this little printed circuit board, okay? I already had a look at it and uh, just uh, marked the components with one and two. This is our controller chip, okay? This controller chip operates both of these memory components. And it records and reads data in a specific pattern uh, that allows it to optimize wear leveling to increase the lifetime uh, of this flash drive to the maximum. So, uh, when this flash drive was pushed up against, it received a fracture, and if you can see, the unit flexes so the board is actually snapped right along here this is a dual layer PCB so there's not much going on in the middle so it's got the top um, circuitry and it's got a bottom circuitry so technically we could spend some time and do some micro soldering repair up here but that's not what we're gonna tackle and uh, try to achieve today uh, this unit uh, seems like is a good really good candidate to demonstrate the work uh, using one of the data extraction tools uh, for the memory chips directly okay so the first step we're gonna take we're gonna use our preheater this is a 32 gigabyte device the most time-consuming portion of this procedure is going to be reading data directly from the chip I'll let it preheat just for a little bit and um, then we'll turn the heat up to 200 degrees Celsius and uh, we will begin applying heat from the top using our rework station, which in our case right now is Hako 850D. It's a digital system, it's a dinosaur, but it's been working pretty good for us. So that's what we use. Um, with the BGA socket nozzle, I should say, on top, uh, to help us release and melt that solder that's underneath the component. This component mounts not like TSOP48, which has pins on uh, both sides of the device. This component has uh, little tiny solder balls underneath it that bond the component to the printed circuit board. So in order for us to remove it, we have to get it to a temperature hot enough so that that solder begins to melt. And only then we can pick up the chip and physically push it over, slide it over, or lift it over. All right, so the preheating is good. We're gonna turn it up to 200 and keep it there for about uh, a minute or so. I'm also gonna turn on my uh, fume extractor because uh, I will be applying quite a little bit of uh, um, flux to help the soldering process and uh, it will get pretty fumey if uh, we don't turn this thing on. Okay, so once our rework station reaches 700 degrees Fahrenheit, we'll bring it down a little bit closer. And in a matter of uh, a minute or so, this chip will be free to remove.
So the chip number one is removed. Now we're gonna turn this upside down. And we're gonna do the same thing for the chip number two. So that's the second memory chip is now removed. Still smoking. Okay. What I gotta do next is uh, perform a cleaning process on those chips and uh, basically wick them up so that the, the leveling is uh, flat. We get rid of, of all of the excess solder. Uh, gonna put them in the bath. This is a BGA-152 uh, memory component uh, packaging. So we will need to have some sort of uh, way of accessing and connecting to those pins that are on the back here. Uh, this is where this socket comes into play. Uh, this is specifically designed for BGA-152, as you can see, uh, the, the image is pretty identical. Uh, well, not pretty identical, it is identical. And this socket works in a way that once this chip is clean, we just drop it into the socket, push down on it, and it clamps to it, making solid connections, and the pinouts are here. Those are, those are the pinouts that go to the reading device that will be extracting raw memory from this memory chip and save it as a binary file on, uh, on a computer. Then that binary file will need to be formed into the structure. That's using the second step of the process and that's uh, basically substituting the original controller, original PCB um, of this flash drive that we removed the chips from with our tools. Our tools are customizable. They can work like any flash drive. The only thing is, is that the algorithm of how the whole thing is supposed to be operating needs to be determined where it already has to be rendered for this tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up these chips and as soon as they're ready, we'll uh, begin the reading process. Okay, so we just finished licking the um, component. Number two. And set it right there. I always use a little bit of a double-sided tape to hold the component in place in front of the microscope, this way it prevents it from bouncing around. Alright, so once we finish weaking, she's gonna lay both of these components in a little tub. This is just a 99.9% alcohol cleaner.
And with the horse hair brush, we're just gonna clean it up. Now this is done for two reasons. To make sure that the surface of this bottom side is completely flat because if it's not, some points will be raised higher than the rest and we may have bad contact in the adapter. Uh, that's the primary reason. But the secondary reason and also pretty important reason is to get rid of all this buildup of flux so we don't contaminate the adapter itself which can lead to poor contact later on. We see we want to have the component to be as clean as possible. And not have any sticky residue on it. this down so that it doesn't distract from the view probably turn this off as well okay so the socket this pin has a dot pointing where the first leg is and in our case it's right there and the dot is right there so this chip goes in like this once it's in there we just release it and this chip is now inside of the socket USB port right there connects to the computer Syncs with the software for data extraction of the chip will assemble uh, that structure and convert it to the actual file system view where we can see the folders, subfolders, files, etc.